All right, guys, we're live for our 13th episode of Keeping It Real Masterminds. The subject today is convert more home valuation leads into listings. Great topic. Um, somebody had mentioned that either Harrelson or uh, Bill Jenkins, like, hey, so many people have these home valuation leads, tools out there. You should do a hangout on that. And the first person I thought of is our special guest, Buddy Blake. So I'm going to formally um, introduce him. Next, um, once I take care of a few housekeeping things. So for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Jeff Manson. I'm a Hawaii real estate broker and founder of Real Geeks. And my co-host is Frank Klesitz. He's the CEO of Viral Marketing. And I want to give a, uh, a congratulations to him and Katie. They've had their first child just, what, two days ago? Yep, just uh, he's about two, uh, two days old. Awesome. So awesome. he just had his first baby, and he's glowing. Look at him. He's glowing like the full moon. <laughs> anyway, never mind. I get a little crazy here. Um, the baby's name is Michael Scott Clezitz, yep. correct? Michael Scott Clezitz, after his, right, my that. father's name and her father's name. <clears throat> awesome. So congratulations to Scott and Katie. We're really happy for them. I'm excited. I got 10 kids. So anyway, I'm excited for them. It's the most amazing thing in the world, having kids. Anyhow, I want to cover a few things. Um, for those of you that did not get an email and you're just viewing this from some other source, if you want to get notified when we do these uh, Keeping It Real Masterminds, you need to go to keepingitreal.com, and on the right side, there's an opt-in form. You only need to put in your first name and email. So we're not going to spam you. You're only going to get notifications of these Keeping It Reals, okay? Um, you can follow Real Geeks Google Plus page because we post them on there. You can follow the Real Geeks um, Facebook page. We post them on there. And you can subscribe to the Real Geeks YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, just subscribe. And you'll, you sh I think you'll get notified if you're a subscriber. Yeah, you. mm -hmm. All right. Um, so there's one other thing. Uh, we were at uh, NAR and had a booth. And there was a lot of people that came by, and they registered to win a one-year um, IDX website, home valuation tool, and PPC management. And we had sent out an email letting them know that we were going to announce the winner on this show. And we did the drawing yesterday, and the lucky winner is April Gail Gossman, and she's from St. Petersburg, Florida. So, April, I will personally be reaching out to you, scheduling a call, going over what you won and how to proceed. And I will also, once we get going and you got some leads coming in, I'm going to do a um, personal. Um, webinar with you and your team, if you've got a team or whatever, I think you may be a broker, and I will go through and train you guys how to use this system effectively so you can get uh, convert more leads, okay? So and round of applause also, for April. Yay, April! Oh, Woo! There. There. <laughs> Didn't work. All right. All right. I'm so trying to click the round of applause, it's not working on Google Hangouts, sorry. There right. we go. There it is. <laughs> All right, enough of that silly business. And one other thing is I wanted to announce that Viral Marketing is offering, I, I, I don't know for how long, but um, so if you watch this two, three months down the road, they may not be um, offering it, but right now they're offering a free trial um, of their services sending out their database. Right, Frank? Yeah, just very simple. You're just getting a direct offer out to your list about getting a free home valuation. All the details are on the site. All right, so perfect. Let's it. I'm, ready. I'm excited to hear some all, good stuff. All right, all right. So um, but we're, I, like I said, I'm really excited to get um, Buddy Blake on here. He's from southeast coastal area of North Carolina. Right, Buddy? Yes, uh, right, about an hour north of Myrtle Beach. Can you name some areas of that you work, just so they know? Uh, Wilmington, Topsail Beach, Wrightsville Beach, Carolina Beach, and Curie Beach. All right, so there's uh, some of the main areas he works. So if you find value with this and him taking his time, he's not getting anything for sharing, he's a nice guy, send him some referrals. He's an active real estate agent. He's been in the business for 19 years. He owns five REMAX offices. He has his own personal team, and his own personal team are on track to sell right around 320 sales this year. Is that right, buddy? It is. <clears throat> somewhere, somewhere in that range, if we can get them all to close by the end of the year. <laughs> all right. Awesome. And that's, just, that's phenomenal. And then he also owns Guaranteed Sale, which is a home valuation portal, and he mm -hmm. also owns Free House Values. So that's why when we were going to do this, I'm like... I know the guy. Buddy's been doing this for a couple years. How long have you been working these home valuation uh, sites and leads? Uh, guaranteed sale we started about three years ago. Okay. So, so he's kinda, it was actually when you could just do forms. You really couldn't give them an instant valuation. Right. Okay. Right. All right. And then it's progressed from there. Um, right. so, so he's got a lot of data, and he's going to share that. 
And I, like I said, I'm just really happy to be having Buddy on here. He is like one of the greatest and nicest guys that I've met. And he really, and I've heard this from not, from just not me knowing him, but I've heard it from lots of agents told me, oh my God, Buddy's so great. He's so helpful. So I just know that he really likes helping agents and he really likes helping his real estate customers. So let's dive right into it. Um, we wanted, for, for those of you that don't know what a home valuation tool is, hey Frank, can you pull up that demo and we'll, we'll, we'll go over what a home valuation tool is. So it's a landing page portal uh, connected on your website. This is actually a Real Geeks one. Um, it's actually part of the website if you have it enabled. But what the consumer can do is they go in, they punch in their address, hit submit. As soon as that submit button is um, submitted, it captures their address. So you've got an address, okay? It, it shows you know, their property, what type it is, and then it says view property details and give valuation. I think guaranteed sale works almost identical to this. Um, yeah, we do. Yeah, we're very similar, Jeff. And we use the same data sets. I mean, I think you and I do a very similar, complete setup. Yeah. So, hey, get, bring that back up, Frank. What yep, happened? Come back. It's coming back. Hang on. <laughs> there it is. Frank's, ti Frank's tired. He had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's tired. He's worn out. I, I, where is it, Frank? Uh, it's okay. one of my old houses in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, oh, oh, no, no. Okay. I was saying, where is the tool? So, scroll right. down and then hit that button. Right here? Get yeah, verify details. property details, give valuation. Then it, it loads the valuation, but it covers it with a light box, and that's to get them to sign up. And then that once they sign up, that creates the lead, okay? Can you fill out that box and just kind of see? Yeah, and it shows comps, but we cover the, the, the values. <clears throat> like I said, Buddy's stuff works just like this. There's other similar ones. It's not a commercial. We're doing a demo because this is what we're talking about. <laughs> I, what are you? What are you interested in? I need to sell ASAP. Hey, that's the ultimate goal. Boom, and then yeah. bam, they've got the 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 price, the valuation range, and stuff. That's like actually that. pretty. That's right on the money. Is that right on the money? Yeah. All right, yay, yes. yay. The, the 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 data point got it, but it's not always accurate. And Buddy's going to go into that later. Um, okay. How important that is, and when it's not accurate, it's actually a blessing because it's a it's a bigger opportunity. Um, so let's let's go in and, and get going here. Um, so, so, buddy, what what are some of the best ways of driving traffic to a home valuation tool like Guaranteed Sell or Free House Values or whatever other one that an agent might have? Well, I think the I mean the best thing always as anything and the most you know, quite honestly quite cost efficient is to hammer your own people that already know you, like your people who, especially the people that bought and sold 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and things like that that are in your database because you don't have to tell them who you are and that your open rates are going to be better. Uh, and, you know, that's that's what we use Frank for. I mean, Frank just hammers them with fantastic messages. You're, you're serving them. You know, you're serving them with information that they want to know, and uh, but that's your number one. That's going to be your number one conversion right there, period, so because they already know you. And you kind of know their timeline. Um, and then the other one, the number two that we think is AdWords because, you know, you and I both know, Jeff, in the uh, world of buyer, going after buyers right now, I mean, it can cost you anywhere from 15 to $35 a lead because yeah, yeah. the Craigslist has changed their deal and all the other platforms that are out there have decided to go non-exclusive. Everybody's doing AdWords. So... But, the, so, but, but with sellers, the interesting thing is you can hyper, you, unlike buyers where you're looking for somebody from all over the world to move to Hawaii or Wilmington or whatever, the sellers, you can focus in on just the zip codes you cover. So number one is you're, you're hyper-focusing your target, but you can also, you're not bidding on Wilmington NC real estate. You're bidding on value, you know, house values. And quite honestly, some of the best keywords is Zillow, Trulia, and we just piggyback on those words. And uh, okay. it, those, and you can get those for you know buck fifty, two fifty per lead. Per lead. So that's per lead. So you're gonna the cost per click. I, I just want to, people to understand it. So the cost per click is less because you're gonna drive so many, and only a certain percentage are actually gonna complete that. Yeah, I mean you could spend you know you could spend ten in most markets. Like for instance, we we're handling it for a few people. We do some, we do a little bit of paper C management. That's not my forte. I just do it to help sure. a few of my friends out. And I'm not as good as you guys because y'all are the pros. But 20 bucks a day in Delray Beach, Florida, for example, will generate about 200 leads a month. 
Okay. okay so, so I mean, so it's so, and it goes around, and so it's it is incredible. the easiest. It is the low hanging, the, the lowest hanging fruit is what Frank does, obviously. You get or however you do it, getting in touch with the people you know. The next sure. low hanging fruit, and then of course, here's the deal: the easiest crack cocaine that everybody. You get all these emails, you see everybody out there doing is Facebook. Yeah, you want to do it, but let's think about the let's think about the logic of Facebook. You can generate more leads. But it's a different lead because those people, you're just showing up on their timeline because you're tied in with their area. They're not looking for houses. They're not looking to sell. They're just curious to what you're doing. So sure. you go from somebody you know to somebody that actually is focusing on some seller term, then to somebody just seeing a basic billboard while they're, while they're scrolling through Facebook. All right. So All right. I think that's, the, that's kind of the hierarchy of it. Okay, so so I just want to recap on on some of that. So the Facebook ads, if I'm hearing what you're saying, the user intent, they're cruising Facebook and they get curious, and the intent was not necessarily to get a home value, but if you're doing Google AdWords and it's highly targeted keyword they're coming in, and you're focusing the neighborhood, their zip code where they actually live, and they go type that in, their intent is to get a home value. And you get, we're getting about a 15 to 20 percent more full sign up on AdWords than we do on Facebook. Because they're seeking it out. Google fulfills demand. You know? right. They're seeking it. I mean, they're looking for it. Yeah. yeah. It, go, it goes back to the, the user intent when you're driving traffic, whether it's to your property search or home value. If you're getting traffic from Facebook or something like that, and they're using, their intent was not really to, to do that action, the conversion rate's going to be lower. It just makes sense. Well, you get a, here's the deal. You can get more leads like, you know, and, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't blast anybody because there's every, every system I believe works if you use it. Uh, sure. But there's a ton of these valuation sites out there and they're, you know, they say, oh, well, you can spend $200 and you get 500 leads. Yeah, you can do that, but that's not, you know, that's, that's just doing boost through Facebook and doing that. And then I will tell you the attrition rate, the first time you do it, you're going to get a lot of leads. And yeah. then as you do it, you, it decreases significantly. Sure, sure. And, and it just comes – here. here's one thing, too, because if you're getting more high-targeted leads, less leads but high-targeted, you don't have to make as many calls. And you know and I know a lot of agents don't like making the calls. It's hard enough to uh, get them to – so, They don't like it. They won't do it. Right. right. <laughs> but yeah, I got a question for you. Is there any, any resources you can give our viewers on any free resources on how to run a Facebook ad? Because uh, yeah. I believe one of, the, one of the selects on Facebook is people who are actually thinking about selling their homes. They have an option. You can run those ads to people in a certain zip code. Well, not only that. Well, first off, retargeting is one of your better ones. Okay? So if they're already, for instance, take your, if you set to do the pixel code on, for instance, Jeff, on all your websites, your, your customers, thing, put sure. that in there so that, so that you can retarget. So every t everybody that goes to buddyblake.com, they're looking at real estate. They're going to get in their timeline my free house values ad. Okay, so you can use retargeting in Facebook. Sure. Now the next thing they just launched. If you use the Power Editor, I don't know if you knew this. Literally two weeks ago, you can you can now drill down in Facebook, doing ads, not boosts, where you can do it by zip code and by homeowner versus renter or anything. Oh, homeowner versus oh, that's great. Yeah, they just started that, but you can only do that through the power editor through Chrome. If you use, you know what I'm talking about. You got to use Chrome with Facebook to do that. Yeah, this get this can get really technical if we're not too careful. Let me let me yeah, go. Yeah. Back. No, I'm just I'm just simply saying you can you can zoom down on your right target now, but still the intent. It, I think remarketing is the best use of Facebook right now. Yeah. Because they're already on real estate websites. You know, I've been trying. Honestly, I've tried to embed it on Zillow on my profile, but it won't work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, hey, I got I got one other question. You said for twenty dollars a day um, in that one market, you get twenty leads. Now, is that twenty signups or twenty leads, including capturing the pro uh, property address and the actual signups? No, we consider those the same. I think they're just as valuable, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, I don't I don't distinguish between the two, other than you can't make the phone call. But uh, no, it's a, no, it's you're going to get for twenty dollars. You're going to get eight to ten in in Delray Beach. Now, San Diego, it's about five bucks a pop. But in right. Delray Beach, right now, it's about two dollars. You're going to get eight to ten leads. Okay, 
conversion cost. I ain't talking about click cost, Jeff. I'm talking about conversion. So, yeah. So a ca so it's either a capture of address only, or right. or the or they went all the way through and put and, in their and information. And it's about fifty fifty. <clears throat> Half the people will give you their address. Now we also started doing Facebook login, and uh, we're getting almost nobody doing Facebook login. So. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to log in with Facebook. I mean, it's well, big... not only that, but you can't get their you can't get their you can't get their phone number unless they have went in and authorized their phone number to be given. So we're going to take that off because we're getting no traction with it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, what it, What are some of the mistakes agents make when they're doing when they're doing these things? You know, you do them doing the doing the home valuation tools. Well, I think uh, one thing that's in, the only thing that's in common. With treating a seller lead, a valuation lead, and a buyer lead is timing. You got to you got to immediately respond while they're thinking about it. Okay, so that's the only thing in common. Then the biggest mistake is they quit. They make they they stab and go. They make one call, two calls, three calls, and then they might then then maybe they throw them in a drip campaign. But you and I both know that email deliverability is getting extremely difficult with GoDaddy's and people like that. So you're hoping and trusting. Um, but they're not doing, I mean, they're quitting too easy and they're looking at it. Their conversion expectation is two weeks. Okay? <laughs> like a buyer, you know, I mean, it's just in the old days, a buyer calls you up, I want to buy a house, I'm looking for a house. They come in town in two weeks to three weeks and they buy a house. Well, with a seller, number one is a lot of them are listed, so they got six months to wait out a listing agreement. Number two is they might, like right now, it's huge the number of people looking, the traffic. They may they're looking after the first of the year, so you got to set it up. The sweet spot for us that we found on my team now. This is my team because we work in it. We use these tools. Seven months to twelve months is the optimal. The, the is the best conversion point after the first thirty days. Does that make sense? It goes thirty days and then it kind of goes down, levels out, and then it starts growing. Whereas a buyer lead, it's thirty days and then it just drops. Right. No, but you've got here's here's the best tip I think I can uh, all the antics in the world. If you will treat every seller lead, whether you get their phone number or not, like a SOI past customer, you will win that game. They <clears> need <throat> to be treated just like a sphere of influence. Okay, so what you're saying is if you just get the address only, however you're working your center of influence, um, or your yeah your your sphere of influence. Yeah. You work them the same way. Yeah, some people use the Buffini where you send it out. We use Service for Life, which is archaic, but it works. You stay in contact, and when it's when they're ready, when that, you know, when somebody dies, somebody has a baby, Frank mm -hmm. needs a bigger house. Whoever is, stays in touch, it's just like expires, Jeff. You you cut your teeth on expires. Yeah. Most people quit in three or four times, but it took seven, eight months a lot of times. Oh yeah, yeah, you got to just keep. Yeah. So I'm, all of our all of our systems, drips, postcard, and everything are set up for five years. Five so, years. Yeah, five years. All right, and then and then you're saying email. So do you do you, you said it wasn't as effective, but you do have put them in an email campaign. We we do. Our systems automatically every 30 days sends them an email that says, "Hey, your values changed. Check it again. Click here. Blah blah blah." Just like everybody does. All but right. Then we then we have a series of postcards. 60 mm -hmm. postcards that they we have physical postcards that they send out. Well, mm -hmm. some send out the good ones. And what they are, instead of hey, it's me, I'm great, it's seller tips. You know, make sure you get your home inspected, whatever it is. We've had them graphically done. We also have an HTML where they can drop them in to Frank or whoever they use, or like real geeks, they can drop it through HTML. We host the, I mean, you, you know, you just drop it in, but you're, you're giving them something other than, hey, just call me. You're giving them service. And the interesting thing is I've never had buyers in a database send me referrals. You can get these seller leads to send you referrals if you stay in touch with them, even if you never list their home. So so, so when you're doing that, you're, are you also calling them on a regular basis? You know? Yeah, we do. We start off, we call, we call them until we contact them. We call we call twice a day until something happens, okay. okay? Until we can define what they are, what they are not, and then from then on, we, def we then from their situation, we determine is it a is okay. it a monthly call, is it a quarterly Got call, it. is it a, you know what I'm saying? 
based on the, 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 the data you get from them and the information, then you say, okay, I'm going to call this, this right. person is called 30 based, days or 90 based, days. Based on based the old-fashioned old skill of listening yeah. to what they want. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And do you have um, a script or something that when you guys first call that you could share or, or you found that it's working for agents that you're working with? And, and yeah, actually, actually, it's interesting because we use the value. Um, we don't ever give an exact value because we found that if we give a range, and I think you do too, we give a high and a low yeah. range, and we skew it a little bit so it's a little bit higher and lower as the market's changing. Because mm -hmm. if we give an exact range, well, an exact AVM that comes out of Smart Zip or CoreLogic or whatever, you can never get them off that number. So yes. what we do, our first call is, hey Jeff, this is Buddy. Listen, thanks for stopping by. You know, uh, real geeks and checking out your house value. I just want to. I want to let you know that information comes from public data. So I, I will be happy to send you the same information that an appraiser would use in case you want to refinance, sell, buy, or whatever you want to do. It's a real. It's a serving call. And it, and then the worse the range, the better the opportunity because they're already mad and they want to yell at you and you defuse them immediately when you call and say. Jeff, man, I got to tell you something. That was horrible. That system sucks. Blame it on the system. But just keep in mind, it's coming from tax data, and nobody in the United States thinks their tax value is correct anyway. So they right. understand that. <clears throat> so you now, play and, on and that. I, and, and, I, and I'll show you this, and I'll share this. This will come out in the first quarter. I'm not selling it. It's a giveaway. We actually, um, and I'll give it to any customer once we get it. It's really it's an engagement book because what we found is. Here, what we found is basically a log and everything, scripts, dialogues, purely for sellers. But it's a guy, but it's a journal that all the agents have to follow. You know what I'm saying with accountability and whatnot. And it's quickly to tell. We can tell if somebody says, "Oh, they lead suck," blah blah blah. I say, "Send me, send me your journal." And they made no phone calls. They made no note cards. They sent no postcards. They sent no emails. They sent no video emails. They didn't go buy the house. I mean, if it's a nice enough house, we drop off a kid at their house. Sure. So, 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 I mean, basic, so basically, you find out if they're not journaling, doing all these things, you're just finding out that their 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 work ethic and their sell skills kind of suck. Well, that's pretty much, yeah. Or you know, they, in, 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 what what's that? Or they don't know what to send. I mean, do you have any, you, you mentioned before, 60 postcards, buddy? You yeah, we have, 60, to, we have every lead package, that go, every 60 lead. postcards. It's incredible. Do you have some examples you can show us? Huh? Do you, have any examples, do you have any examples laying around you can show us to the camera? Uh, you know what? I don't, but I'll tell you what I can do is I can see if I can show you. We actually use them in our books. For instance, make it sparkle. I don't know if you can... Can you see the bottom part yeah, of that? Bottom one. That's one of the postcards. Here's another one of the postcards. Uh, let's see if I got any more. And Frank, I'll get here. You go. Apply a fresh coat of paint. You know, one of them's get rid of the dog. One of them's get out of the house when you got a showing. And actually, we take it one step further, Frank. We use it. We use the same scripts in our radio spots. <laughs> so you know, basically serving people, but. Frank, I mean, and Frank, I'll be glad, and you too, I'll be glad to give y'all the PSD files, and y'all can do yeah, it. Let's, let's talk about that, because so far everyone's like, this is a lot of great stuff. So I just want to step back really quick, Jeff. Um, yeah, guys, go for just, it. Just so you know in the comments on the main page here, uh, a while back I did some internal team trainings here at Viral on actually how to run a good Facebook ad using uh, to drive traffic to your free value report. I put a link to that internal training in our company on the page. On top of that, I also did team training on ad roll which is great for retargeting that Buddy talked about. All right, mm -hmm. I have a link to our team training there. Feel free to watch that. But uh, more importantly is if you Google magical seller lead generation email, that's my title, Google magical seller lead generation email, it should be the first one or two options on Google. I put a link down to it. You can see the, the copywriting of what I would recommend you sell out to your send out to your entire database, your buyer leads, seller leads, past clients. If you're writing them all up, send them this plain text message and it will drive a ton of people back to the home value report. And the best time to send that, buddy, is what between Christmas and New well, Year's? Well, right, right now I wouldn't send anything because you're going to get you're getting mixed in with all the junk that's being out there. But between Christmas and New Year's, we found that there's a lot of people on brand new computers, on computers. They're tired of their family being in town, or or <laughs> they make, you know. I mean, I'm, let's face it. I mean, we're all that way. We love our families, but you get tired of it. You're done. So, and they're off work, they ain't got nothing else to do, there's nothing on TV worth a darn, 
So they're, you know, they're, they go on and they're starting to think about what's going to happen after the first of the year. Okay. So that so was a training. Great. So I, mean, I, got, I gave everyone an example on Facebook ads. I gave them an example on, on retargeting or remarketing with ad roll. It's up on the comments. I gave them an example of an email to go uh -huh. to their database to drive traffic. One more thing you mentioned was AdWords and that hyper local targeting. Is there any training out there, any videos on YouTube that people can go that you'd recommend? Um, I've got some that I can share with you. I'll send to you that we suggest. And uh, okay. you, know, for, you, you can hire somebody to do it for you know, 150 bucks a month to $1,000 a month. But well, I tell you what I did, uh, and this is, our, this, is really, this is really simplified, and Jeff's a smarter guy than me on this. There's a guy named, you ever heard of Rich Bruns? For 99 bucks, you buy his guide to AdWords. He's, he used to be a huge engineer at Intel. He hates Google, and his theory is don't use any of their automated, any of their automated conversion techniques. And he sells his book and one hour of coaching for $99. So that would be a good example for someone to go to for the ad training, right? Absolutely, and you can do it yourself. And you can do it yourself. It's easy. And I'll give them the key words because here's the deal. As we all know, I can give up. You can give. You can give your competition your book of business, and they won't give do us it the, anyway. Give us the top top five keywords, buddy, right now. What are the best keywords you would think that agents should own if they're running a pay per click campaign? House values, home values, Zillow values, Trulia values, uh, my house value. And then you would target that to that zip code yeah. or that area. Yeah. Well, so not just that. People you in areas. Use the broad. You got to use the broad. You got to use the precise. You got to play. You know, there's a technique you play with it. Yeah. To, you know, so. But, but if you get an expert and you ran with that, you get pretty good results. And then you mentioned we can also get the. Uh, you'd be. No, I'm putting you on the spot, but you're cool with the PSDs. As I'll send you the Dropbox the link to all the PSD mm -hmm. files, and I've already got the HTML files, and I've got them on a server, so you can pull the images. You don't have to do nothing but drop it in okay. and put their own branding in it. All right, before yeah. everyone emails me, I'll make sure I get that posted in the comments. So the PSD is the yeah. HTML link from Buddy. Now, yeah. Jeff, if you, Jeff, if you want to, you can keep the free house values logo on there. I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, we got we got a lot of questions. Let me go to a couple questions really quickly. Um, first off, I know you're very strong about this question. Okay, um, is the inside sales agent making those calls? No, we we went the inside sales route. Inside sales is fine on the mass number of buyer calls, but what, what we found quite honestly, I and mean, everybody's got different arguments. The person that's going to list the house that is the expert needs to take that call because when that seller calls, they want to talk to the person that is going to be listing it, not some telemarketing person that says, I got to get back with you with that. They want to talk to someone that says, you know, I sold the house down the street. Oh, yeah, Porter's Neck. Yeah, you got to talk about this. Let me tell you the rejections we had. And you can't substitute knowledge and experience for that. So that is the biggest mistake that I see. So you had some, you didn't have very good results putting an unlicensed person on those calls, basically. No, we did. We did with buyers. We would cultivate stuff. But at the end of the, with sellers, I would never. Seller leads are the most valuable asset in your business, other than your sphere of influence. And to trust them with the least paid employee in your operation makes no sense. I would agree 100%. I'll leave it with that. That's a great quote. Let me get to one more here. Uh, back earlier, we were talking about just capturing lead after we showed all the examples of traffic. Uh, what do you do? Maybe I didn't catch this. Maybe we talked about it. what do you do if there's no email or no phone or lack of information? What do we do if there's so, just very minimal information? Address on those only, and they didn't fill it out. Yeah. Uh, you want me? Uh, what we do? Is we, we use these seller books. Again, we got these templates. We say I'll give you the I'll give you the source to the lady that does them. She can she 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 makes them for people all over the country, and she drops them in, and she does them, and they're really inexpensive. They're about a buck and a half a piece. We drop this in the mail, Frank and Jeff, to every single lead when they come in, whether they got a phone number or not. We simply look up their, where they get their tax bill because much like Hawaii, we're in an area where we have a lot of out-of-town owners right. because they have rental property, second homes. So selling it to the, sending it to the house doesn't do any good. So we look it up in the tax records, and it takes five minutes. And, and then we send these books out, and we send a handwritten note with it, and then we put them on our on our postcard campaign until we can until they come back and eventually they'll keep coming back and they'll give you their stuff if they're interested. And how do you mail those books? Just the book the way they are, or you put them in like a little 
thing we like have this a, that comes out. We put we put them in a white. Uh, we have a little white. Um, I don't have one here. I, I should have been more prepared. Uh, quite honestly, it, it's a simple stationary. We're Remax. It's a Remax book that says here's the information you're requesting. Rough cost on those with how many you buy? Uh, it, these are about a buck fifty. It costs us about a buck eighty a pop to mail them. So you figure three four dollars a pop. Okay. Hey, buddy, I got one other thing. On the non-address, uh, or just the address-only ones, you still make every attempt to try and get the owner's phone number as well, too, right? Yeah, we use, I mean, we go, we use some of the own Spokio and some of that, yeah. but we we actually, and I'll tell you, Jeff, we tried to use, and there's a lot of people out there touting that they've got augmented data. Yeah. Uh, we went that route, we went that route, and it was horrible. It was a horrible experience, and it was um, it was not good. So, And I'm not saying it's not possible. By IP address, Frank, is what we're talking about. Yeah, let's and, go back to the augmented data. That means the lead comes in, and before it gets to the agent, they're they're going to sites like LexisNexis or ChoicePoint and those big companies right. that aggregate that data and try to find, okay, what phone numbers match this, and they, they augment the phone number for you from a public record search when you get it. Right. Yeah, now, you can go to, if you're a Vulcan, I will say this, Vulcan 7 does a pretty good job, but they don't have an API for it. You can, they will, if you're a customer, you can send them your CSV file, uh, with the information, and I think it's 50 cent a name if they retrieve a phone number and an email too now, they will get it back to you, but it's, you know, you have to do that on your own. I haven't, sure. I've done it once or twice, but I still found the phone numbers were only about 30 or 40 percent real, but but the funny thing is, even if you call those people and you're good on the phone, you might pick up some business that way. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's always an opportunity. Anything right? else we can add on incomplete data? <clears throat> uh, your goal is to keep sending them stuff until you just keep filling in the blanks, Frank. Sometimes you can't get all the information the first time. So, so, so let me ask you a question real quick. You're sending these postcards. What's the frequency that you're sending out the postcard campaign um, to these leads? Once a month, and unfortunately, I don't have an automated way to do it. We do it literally with the accordion method. Like, for instance, this sounds archaic. Good Lord. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. Lead comes in. I know. Lead comes in. We print out a sheet of 30 or 60 uh, labels, and we pop them on them, and we got two accordions, January, February, and we grab all the February, put a stamp on it, and send them out. So how right. many postcards, Dan asks, how many postcards would you say it takes to get a response? So this lead comes in, no information, you just got the, the address, right? I, I don't know a postcard count, but 7 to 12 months is a sweet spot when you, you know, a combined effort. 7 to 12 months, Dan. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, you you know, and people quit. What people always quit too early, always, and then they say it don't work. No, they yeah. didn't work. Yeah, I was gonna say they don't work. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's face it. The marketing. I mean, Frank. Here's the deal, Frank. If you send an email, if, Jeff, if you give, if you generate a lead to a realtor, or we generate a lead to a realtor, Frank, you generate a a response from one of the emails, or just even an open. You've done your job. The rest of it's up to the agent and their skill set, their training, and theirs. They can't blame you if you delivered the lead and the opportunity. Now, mm -hmm. if they want you to do all the work for them, they're going to have to pay you more money. <laughs> I mean, that's all there you is know, and Well, here's the deal. Sam, Samuel Dot asked the question, is there a way to put the postcards into a system to have them automatically drip? I don't have... I'm in the internet marketing world. I don't know. I don't have any examples of that working other than giving you a fulfillment list. But here's I the deal. Do, I've heard of a sendpepper.com might do that. Have you heard of sendpepper? I've not. I'll tell you what we did do, but the problem is it's such a one-to-one -one thing. You might have three today, four today. What we have done, and I haven't done it in a while, we would take a month, and we would, because Quantum, you can do a drip uh, postcard campaign with Quantum Mail, Quantum Direct, but the problem is they don't have an API where you can send one up, so you can upload a CSV file, and then it'll start dripping them. So you can't do them one at a time where these three came in that day and these five came in the other day. Yeah. And, and I think if you wait a month, you're 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 not. You, you need right. to get those things out to them right away because some of these people are ready to go right away. Well, not only that, but this is the biggest. Well, people don't realize, uh, Jeff, and I know you do because we've talked about it. Seller valuation leads is the biggest preemptive expired attack that's ever been on the earth. <laughs> that's a good way of thinking of it. <laughs> because they're getting. Listen, they're looking for another agent. They want to see what their house is worth. They're done with their agent. So I mean, whoever's calling them back and sending them stuff, you know, let's face it, nobody's doing this stuff. I mean, there's very few agents. A lot of people will buy it, but very few agents do the follow-up. Buddy, let's talk about cost, man. I mean, so you're spending, what, 2 to $3 per lead to come in? 
No, we're time. probably we're spending, I'm going to say this, per seller lead, we're spending, well, let's talk about all the costs. A lot of people don't yeah, like yeah, to talk I want to go through the whole ROI of the process, if you could, for us, the best you all can. Right. We're spending, uh, all right, whatever your platform cost is, and everybody's all over the board, I'm not going to get into people's platform costs, but if it costs you $2 to get them in the door, be it Facebook, be it whatever it is, all right, and then you spend $3 mailing them something, and then you, and then you spend another dollar a month so it, you could have ten, you could have ten to fifteen dollars into a conversion. Then if you get a twelve percent, we're getting about a twelve percent conversion in eighteen months on on a valid seller lead that we actually can so get. On a hundred on a hundred leads that come in, you get twelve right. appointments in how many months? Within eighteen months. Within eighteen months, you get okay. Yes, yeah. number everyone wants to know. So you yeah, have to exactly. So, but, so now, now I, I will also say this, Frank. You're talking to a guy that is not the biggest statistician in the world, and so I'm not that good with it at all as far as conversion rates and all this because I we totally went away from, quote honestly, return on investment to return on relationships is what we're trying to focus our entire company on now. What made, so, what, what, what made that shift? Why don't you go a little deeper in that shift for us? Well, I'll tell you what made that shift. Uh, I own a, I own, I'm fortunate. I, I, I don't own it. I serve five Remax franchises. We got about 73 agents, and I'm watching. I got agents that don't have assistants, don't have anything that are doing five and six hundred thousand dollars a year, not spending one penny other than sphere of influence, sending to Buffini and things like that. Okay, but they're working with their relationships. And then here I am. I went down the road for many years. Quite honestly, I bought my way to the top. You know, our biggest year we did about 110 million dollars in sales. But I can assure you it wasn't near the profit range that that one agent is because mm -hmm. I was building a transactional business and not a relational business. That's the difference. So what changed is, and, and you will find this out, Frank, having kids probably changed my mindset more than anything because I do not want to continually have to churn out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of leads and have 25 buyer agents working for me to make a living. Did yeah. that answer? Did that answer the question? Well, I remember at a mastermind a few years ago, you read Gary Vaynerchuk's book and like change your life. Was that it? Well, I think that was it. I tell you, the best book I've ever read in my life, and nobody will read it. The Cult of the Customer by Shep Hyken. That right there is probably the best book I've ever read in my life about sales customers and everything else. It's because most of us, let's face it, most of us buy websites and systems based on what we want it to do. We don't pay any attention to what the customer wants. And I think that's really the biggest shift of what I'm what we're really seeing here is that you're coming this process with lots of love over a long period well, just, of time. I mean, well, I'm coming full circle because, you know, you know, I'd rather be that, and listen, I'd rather be an agent making a half a million dollars a year spending 30000 a year in marketing than somebody making $2 million a year spending $700,000 a year. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we got some, good. Well, I got some more questions. I got some more questions here on the right. If anyone has any questions that we can go deeper on, I know uh, I gave some examples in the comments of driving pay-per-click. What was the name of the individual buddy one more time to get the AdWords who you recommend to learn more about AdWords? It's richbruns.com. Okay. And, and you're you going to give us the link to the, uh, the seller, the, who's the seller book vendor? Um, I'm gonna have to email that to you. Her name is Angie Israel. She just started. She used to be. She's been in uh, outdoor marketing forever and a bunch of stuff. She opened her own firm, and I'll send it to you. I'll post her stuff up on the comments and get her lots of business. And then finally, uh, you'll send me a link to the PSDs for the postcards. I'll send you the PSDs and, and I'll send you the HTMLs too. Wonderful. Okay. If anyone and has if you, if you want them, Jeff, you can have them too, and y'all can make them. And Ben, I don't care because here's the deal: awesome. only a few people are gonna use them. So let's talk about past clients. We have a question from Anna about how often do you send stuff to past clients? So you're emailing and communicating and at least mailing your seller leads. We do a Monday we do a Monday morning coffee email, but we're shifting after I've sent those graphs to y'all. Wednesday and Thursday is by far the biggest days that people are looking at houses uh, from our stats from 26,000 leads that we track for 18 months. So we're going to shift it to a Wednesday email. We send a Wednesday email that has a feel good message and kind of what's going on in town. It's not selling or anything. Now, physically, we send a newsletter. It's called serviceforlife.com. Remember old Craig Fort? He's been around forever. 
they send you all the content. You just literally do your own thing. You print it out and you send it out. It's black and white. It ain't sexy, but it's real. So you send a weekly custom newsletter and yep. a monthly mailer mailer to how many people? Uh, well, we've got about forty-seven thousand people in our database. Oh my goodness! Hold on, let's just talk just past clients. Uh, past. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the, so the, you're, you're the, emailing. Everybody. You're emailing. You're emailing forty-seven thousand. Yeah, email. Everybody gets it. We've we've got about we've got about forty-eight hundred past clients. Uh, but when we now keep in mind, we hadn't mailed anything to them in ten years, Frank. We started six months ago, and probably one third of them, the first mailing came back. Because they had already moved, died, or gone, and we lost opportunities. We quickly realized we had really screwed up by not staying in touch with them. Good. Well, you know, I'm all about the database. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's about. The, but you got to have a multi-pronged attack. You can't just rely on it. You, electronic. You got to do. There's that's the cheapest. But you got to get something to them physical because nobody's doing it. And I'm gonna tell you right now. I've come to the conclusion. I watch agents. You know, the beauty of owning a brokerage is I kind of get to see what everybody's doing and how much money. The, we got agents that do nothing. They literally write five note cards a day to people they know, and they get better business than anybody. Because a note card, I think, is actually higher on the, on the, on the, um, on the value tool than a phone call now. Because nobody answers their phones anymore, and it takes time to write a note card. Like, let me ask you, Frank, when somebody sends you a note card, a hand, not a send-out card and that crap, mm -hmm. but when you, when you get a note card, somebody sits there and actually writes it out, hey, I am so happy for you about your baby. Which one do you open first? Which means the most? It's, it's the handwritten note. Even being like a tech, technology company, we still get referrals. We still send handwritten notes. Yep. Yeah, I suck at it personally, and you know, I actually got, I bought the I got the app. There's an app for iPads called Felt, which I, you know I thought that was going to be my solution because you can just literally you write it in and it looks re it's the real deal. It's not like like I said send out card crap, um, but it's four but it costs four dollars a pop to send it. But got it. That, but you can't, here's the deal: you can't scale that. We had a question here. This is an interesting question. He, the gentleman doesn't know this will work in like a Manhattan, New York market. Do you have anyone that has success in like a high-end premium, like say Manhattan, you know, doing this stuff? Do you know what would you say to that? Because we got a couple questions here on that one. Well, I, I'm gonna defer. I, I'll, I'll talk, but I'm gonna defer to uh, Jeff because everything. I don't think he's ever sold a house under a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. I wish that was the case. Well, but, how would you see that? I mean, you know, buddy, you're in, you're in um, North Carolina. What about someone in high in Hawaii or Manhattan or let's say in like Beverly Hills? Does stuff like this even work? Yeah, I think it does. Um, we got what I suggest is farming. And number one, I mean, I'm actually we're going back to farming. Pick neighborhoods, but you got to be careful. You got to go into a neighborhood where there's no agent that has more than 40% market share. That's a Craig, that's an old Craig Proctor technique. Don't jump into a neighborhood where somebody controls it, and then use your valuation site, and we use microsites for it so that you show the neighborhood entrance or whatever. So before they ever even read a word, they they realize it's that, and then it goes in, and you start. Then you're able to. They look up their house value. You segment your database, and I know you love that word, Frank, because if they come in, you put them over in. If it's landfall, you move them over into landfall. So then you communicate with them directly on landfall for the next forever. So, so yeah, we're actually starting to farm with postcards again. Now, we've been doing it for about three or four months. I'm not going to say we're getting a whole bunch of listings off of it, but we're building databases quickly of neighborhoods, individualized neighborhoods. And that's what Greg Harrelson does on one of the previous calls when we got his marketing going is that on all the prospecting calls when he gets emails, they would circle the neighborhood, or like right. in Myrtle Beach, it's condo buildings. So right. they have their entire database of buyers and sellers and past clients tagged. They have hundreds, if not thousands, of tags um, by the actual area. So you can send a very specific message about that condo building out to those people, and that's probably what's going to get you in those very niche, high-end markets, I would think. Well, I'll tell you, somebody does a real good job, like in Tampa. Do you know Andrew Duncan? Yeah, you know Andrew. <laughs> One of ours. Well, you know, he's, he has a, you know, kind of like you, he has a lot of folks that don't live in Tampa on the beach areas. Well, nobody's mailing the out-of-town owners. So if you farm them, nobody else is mailing them. 
So when they think about selling that beachfront house, they see the market's coming back. You send them some stats, and then you send them a house value. They want they're I mean they're freaking up in New Jersey somewhere. They want to know what's going on because they're not there. You're a captive audience. You're the only guy in town hitting them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would agree. Whether you're doing email or home value or any kind of marketing, a high end. The people just because they live in a more expensive home, they're still people, and they still want to know all the same things, and it's going right. to work. And and they're you just kind of cater to them. Yeah, they're curious. <clears throat> okay, yeah. one more question here. So the last question here on the right, and feel free, everybody. We got a lot of people watching. Just ask a question here on the right, and I'll ask Buddy here or Jeff. Um, again, Dan asked another question. You know what your advertising cost is per signed client? Dan obviously very analytical, wants to know what's going right. on here. I don't. I wish I, so I, I, I wish I could. I, I wish I could tell you. I tell you what I do with my listing agent, and kind of the number I came up with about a year ago, and I don't know if it's accurate, was about six hundred dollars. Because what I do with her split, for instance, um, off the top, uh, six hundred dollars comes back to me to cover the cost of acquisition. Does that make sense? Say that one more time. All right, my listing partner. A flat 600 bucks. I calculate it out. Now, I do some radio, too, so that's going to be a little bit more. But I, the acquisition cost for me is around $600 for a, for a, for a, um, a, for listing. a listing. Now, I, can't, I don't have it segmented out, you know, a guaranteed sale versus a free house values or whatever. I'm talking about aggregately. So you'll spend, you're spending $600 to get a listing. Oh, I'd, I'd pay, well, I'll pay 25% referral to get a listing. I mean, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, because guess what? You get the average is you get nine buyer opportunities after every listing, and then we use an IVR, and then you know that's where you, that's your best buyers. You get it. You get additional sellers too from all the sign calls yep. and the advertising on that. Because if you're asking the right questions, and that's where a lot of people miss it, even on the buyer stuff, but sellers start out looking at um, at properties, whether they're looking at a sign. Or uh, a website where they've signed up and stuff. So you got to be asking the questions and making sure you're finding out if they got a if, if they're a homeowner and they got a property to sell. Because if they do, you need to sink your teeth into them and and work them like Buddy's saying. Well, you're right. We use writers. We use free house value writers or microsite writers, for instance. If it's a neighborhood called Landfall, we'll call Landfall Values. Drive them to a little micro to its own little value site. Put it on the sign. So all the neighbors driving by, they're just, you know they're curious. Yeah, okay. yeah. We got two questions on CRM. Let's talk about that. How do you manage all this on the back end? Can you very clearly explain maybe how you segment your leads by your CRM? Like what CRM do you use where your leads go? Well, I'm not going to get into what CRM I use because I don't think that would be um, I've used every I've used about everything out there other than Infusionsoft because I can't figure out how in the world to do it. Um, <laughs> but um, what we use is on our main website, our buyer website, I call it, which is your one front-facing, like Real Geeks is a buyer website, basically. I mean, now he's got a seller component. We go, the first thing we do is we make sure every one of them will go in there via API or whatever. We API with most of, most CRMs or a number of them, the email parsing or whatever. You, you got to do a few things. First off, you got to set up a drip campaign that's seller related, and you got to set them up for a safe search for their neighborhood, okay? so that they're getting houses coming on the market, price changes. Now, in my market, we have we actually are able to use sold data, so it's kind of like a market snapshot, the top producer. So they're getting constant information. That's the safety net. Setting up a safe search for every single one of these leads that you got an email address on, that is your safety net if you don't do anything else whatsoever. Now, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. I'll take that. Um, now we are playing with Wise Agent right now. I will tell you to just move seller leads to because they got some pretty cool. Like you guys do the best job with the mass emails, but but one to one email, video email, we've had success with Bob Bomb and Wise has got a deal where you can pull up, you can pull up Jeff Jeff Seller, hit a button and send him a quick video message, and it says, Hey Jeff, I noticed you were just on there. I just want to put a name with a face. Hey, boom, and then you track it. The best advice I can give for emails is that if it's a blast email and it's like just right. loading everyone in, send it through something like Vertical Response, which we use, which has great deliverability. Absolutely. But again, if you're using um, like just targeted drip emails, like when a lead comes in, you know that lead 
ideally it goes right into a CRM that has the email drip functionality built in, ideally. Absolutely. That's kind of like the Infusionsoft. If it doesn't, you got to have the API to push that information to something that has a drip, something like, you know, eye contact for $10 a month or whatever that may be. Or even... Well, you gotta, here's, you gotta, here's the deal. you got to use their name. you got to use their address. you got to make it look like this. And that's the other thing in the emails, Jeff, and you agree with this. All your follow-up emails you got to have a system that will auto-populate their, the address of the house they're looking for and say, we put R-E, lowercase R-E, in the subject line. 123 Elm Street. Automatic. In the subject line. Yeah, in the subject line. Yeah. yeah, the best, let me say that again for everyone. When a seller lead, lead comes in and you want to email them, the best subject line is regarding your address. Right, not their name. Because everybody's got their name, but you, but their address. Because they're always, how did you get my address? They, I mean, they go they go open that. Yeah, that's a really good one key takeaway for everybody on the hang. I, I like that one. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, are, there, are there more questions on there, Frank? Got a couple more. I mean, we can keep We're going here. Close to the end. So yeah, I got there's, there's more questions. Yeah. So, buddy, I like this one. This is a good good question. I like to ask everybody. If you had advice for a beginning agent, someone who just started in your office, on how to get more listing leads, and they're on a tight budget. What would you tell them? Well, first off, I find those the most. Uh, I find those are the ones that will actually use the systems because they're not. They haven't went out and bought nine systems and used none of them, and don't think they know everything. Um, I would say if it were me and I was starting out, number one is I'd get my sphere of influence uh, going. Obviously, I'd hook up with somebody like yourself, Frank, that can get the electronic process going out. Um, I would send my sphere of influence information about your house values and things like that. I would be on Facebook and AdWords. Right now, with, and I wouldn't even try to go after buyers. It's too expensive to go after buyers. I'd be going after, uh, I'd be doing AdWords and Facebook. Very targeted AdWords. Very, very targeted, very targeted AdWords. Targeted specific if, areas you get, competition. If, you get the, if you get the listings, you will get the buyers. And then go to Hotline America for $19 a month and get an IVR system so that you can capture them when they call on your house. Yeah. I know your free house values product is what, like nothing. I mean, if you no. need the site. We charge, I mean, I don't want to get into that because this is not a commercial, but I mean, we, you know, we're, we're a different animal and, you know, it, 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 it's not for everybody and, and but, you know, it's, it's not expensive. I mean, but I will tell you this, it's real expensive if you don't use it. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, the, the number one thing that Buddy and I find with helping other agents is they buy these tools and they don't either drive traffic to it to get the leads, but even the second worst thing is they'll pay and and drive traffic to it, and then they don't follow up and call. You know, I got I got to tell you a story. I I got to tell you a story. Guaranteed Sale is the most expensive lead uh, value lead uh, platform out there. We charge five hundred ninety-five dollars a month, six hundred ninety-five dollars a month, but you get an exclusive territory, and it's only for usually, and most of it's the rate members, the uh, you know those people, and because you get like a huge territory, you could get all of Chicago. We only let one agent. The people, but but the funny thing is, the people that will spend the money and use it will do extremely well with it. The people that won't will yell that it don't work. Does that make sense? Yeah, they're not doing what it takes. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, if, if you if, if if people would just use the system, I mean, how much is Real Geeks? You, I mean, it is ridiculously how cheap your system is compared to most platforms. Well, how much is that thing, Jeff? It, it's 150 a month and the $50 extra for the seller tool. So $200 a month, and it's got the I, you know, it's not a commercial, but the CRM, everything. No, but I know I got. Listen, I've got competition in my town that that does extremely well organically. Here's the deal: yours and there's a few other that do organic very well that are very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now I will say this, and and this is just a message I'm going to give to agents about: I don't care what system you use, what CRM, but do not. You can use them to get leads, but do not park and host your leads and your lead system on any system that your company provides for you. Because you're at one day, you're going to want to leave that company, and you're not either. You're not going to get to take the leads with you, or they're or when you leave, they're still going to have them. Because that's a big that is a big thing in the brokerage world, and I've learned a lot about brokerage, whether I wanted to or not, in the last five years since I've done this. And why I don't know, I did it, but anyway. <laughs> but the the big thing that a lot of people teach you, and I don't care what I don't care what brand it is, 
They teach you, put it on our platform, put it on our platform, put it on our platform. Go get a real geek site. Go get Wise Agent. Go get a spreadsheet and keep up with your people. Don't park, do not depend on any large company that you work for because you're an independent contractor. And one day, you're going to either grow your business to the point where you don't like being there or you just have a culture issue. You always have to be prepared to be mobile. And that is the biggest mistake that I see. We have people that come to us and their company won't release their database. And then they and then what they do is they start taking that. And this is another subject, but I just want to give some hints out there to new agents. Then what they do is they recruit agents, new agents, and say, I'm going to give you a thousand leads. Well, guess whose thousand leads those were? <laughs> so that's off, top, that's off topic, but it's just passionate to me. No, no, and, and, and we really appreciate that, buddy, because you're an actual broker now, not just an agent, and you're not you're not telling your agents to put them their leads on your system. You're telling them go get your own system, so that way if you ever leave, you, they're your, they're your leads. No, exactly. I mean, you know, obviously we're with Remax. I like Remax certainly. They provide sure. free websites. Take the leads from them, move them into your system. So they're coming back to your website so that if you change companies, all you got to do is change your logo. Yeah. Good advice. Buddy, we got five more minutes. we got a few more questions. I really like this question from Carla. Buddy, off topic, but would you share any radio scripts? You mentioned that, you know, some of the things that you said in your postcards, you run on the radio. Um, she's running an ad tomorrow. What would you say on the radio to drive people to a free house value site or a guaranteed sales site or evaluation site? Um, well... God, I wish I would have been prepared. I could have played you one. Basically, I'll tell you what we do. What's, one of them is, let me see. Let me see if I can remember one of them because I just cut three new ones. One of them is, says, if you're, thinking, if you're thinking about moving, no, if you've got your house on the market, please, when you have a showing, get out of the house. Leave the house. There's no buyer on earth that wants to see it. Now, if you want to find out what your house will sell for in today's market for top dollar, Go to freehousevalues.com or guaranteedsale.com or jeffmanson.com, and that's it. I don't. I mean, I drive them to some type, and that's the reason why you know the national website, Guaranteed Sale Free House Values, for us seems to work better because it seems like they trust it versus an individual agent's website. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you know, we're you know we're like we certainly know Zillow, but we're like the baby Zillow. <laughs> but but I think I think those things you got to drive them to somewhere that's memorable. You got to have a compelling call to action. Um, you know, guaranteed sale. I mean, quite frankly, that's been, that has been the number one call to action on radio forever. So now we used to do guaranteed, or we buy it, we drop that because what happened for us was that we had to end up buying some houses. But it really, that wasn't the reason we dropped it. The problem was when the market got tight, the only pe the only people that called were the people that were upside down or in trouble. And we only we didn't get any high end calls, so now we drop the or we'll buy it. Now we'll sell your house in 29 days, or you pay me nothing in commission. Hey, Guaranteed. hey, buddy. Oh, okay, hey, buddy. I got a uh, basically a tip. So if you do have an individual site or something that um, is not like a, a portal type, like Guaranteed Sale, you can get a, a URL that's memorable, free home values, um, you know, Arizona or whatever dot com. So you can do that on your, your spots, your mailings and stuff, and then redirect that to whatever the landing page is. So Absolutely. they'll go there, type it in, and then it'll redirect to whatever you've got. So that way you can put that on there. And they won't even know that it did that. They'll just go to the page and land. Well, not only that, but it's awesome. It's awesome. We do that with our we do that with all our postcard because it's awesome for tracking. Sure. Two more so. questions. What's your monthly ad budget? And this is from AJ and Abby. Hello? What's your monthly ad budget? How many closings will you have this year from those home value leads? Good way of looking at it. Right now, uh, unfortunately, we've gone through a mode, uh, and I think I shared this with Jeff, that we've had a horrible buyer conversion year. Um, and what happened was when I went to Remax and bought a Remax, I lost most of my good buyer agents to my own Remax, <laughs> if you will. So, 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 and I didn't, and I was too greedy and didn't raise the splits. But uh, this year, we're going to close. I would say 70%, this is a guesstimate, 70% of our listing, general brokerage listings that we get, come from, they, they originate through one of the home value sites. Now, it could be a postcard that ran them there, it could be a radio ad that ran it there, there's no way to do it, but that's how they initially come in. We're going to close probably about 210, 230 resales this year listings. 
our ad budget that we spend right now is we spend eighteen hundred dollars a month on radio. Now, granted, keep in mind I'm in Wilmington area, North Carolina. We only have one hundred and forty thousand population, so we're a very small town. So if you're in, you know, if you're in San Diego, radio is expensive. Eighteen hundred dollars a month in radio, and I use Matt Wagner for that. And then uh, we spend about a thousand dollars a month in AdWords and and Facebook. And the nice thing about it is you can turn it on and turn it off, like. What we do is we don't run because we know that our system, my team, falls apart on the weekends and at nights. We just don't respond well on weekends, okay? They, either they're showing or they're off work, so I just literally gave up. So we don't even run any AdWords or any marketing, radio, or anything on the weekends because we can't respond well. So if we can't respond well, why run? Does that Buddy, make sense? One last, Buddy, one last question. you got one minute. Do you send out farming postcards? To people yes. to drive them to free house values. What data do you use to target those postcards? And can you explain how that works? Uh, we do when we're doing farming postcards. It depends. If it's a neighborhood, like if it's a beach, we use tax records, and it's more expensive because we can't use every door direct because we're mailing to people that's out of town that owns the houses. I don't want to mail it to the renter. But normally, if there's an area, we use every door direct, and we put the call to action on instead of just you know, saying, hey, call me, which everybody does, we put the call to action, go to blank, blank, blank values dot com, whatever that neighborhood is, like you said, by vanity, and then we, we it's a call to action for them to do something other than look at a card and say, I'm not ready to sell, and they throw it away. Or at least they'll look at it and say, I, I wonder what this is. I wonder what the value is. Okay, and you're giving us some examples of those postcards, is that correct? Uh, I'm going to send you everything I got. Well, I think everyone's looking forward and to every that. Door, every door direct is like 33 cent for the 6 by 11 cards, mailed, printed, and everything. Nice. By the post mm -hmm. office. All right, Jeff, we'll have you wrap it up. I just want to say, everyone, uh, buddy, let's connect after this. Give me that link. Everyone wants to have that link. I'll put it right in the comments here, right down here below on the page of all the Dropbox stuff, which then, is wonderful. We'll appreciate you sharing that. And then we can put a link to it. I'll do a blog post on Real Geeks next week sometime. And maybe we'll put a link on the put blog. A time post. limit on that because I do, you know, obviously that's part of my value proposition to my <clears throat> system. Let's 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 say that we'll leave it up through the end of December, okay? Okay. All right. Sounds Fair good. Enough. All right, All right Jeff. Yeah, wrap it up, buddy. yeah, I'd really like to thank Buddy for coming and joining us. It's been great, and we could probably go on for hours and hours of all, all different subjects. But um, really wanted to thank him, and wanted to thank everybody for all the positive feedback that Frank and I have been getting. Um, about these uh, keeping it real hangouts. I mean, it's been tremendous. I get emails all the time and Facebook messages, and we really appreciate the feedback because that makes it worth yeah, doing. Yeah, let us these. know what you want to see. Like, put it right here in the comments. Let us what's good, what we can change, how we can improve them. Let us know. If you have any suggestions for great guests, let us know as well. We're going to keep these going for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be doing it, and we're going to start back up. We're going to take a break. So this is the last one for the year. We're going to start back up on January 15th, Thursday, January 15th. And then we'll schedule two for February, and probably we're going to shoot for two a month. Which, uh, pretty much every other Thursday, but two a month, depending on Frank and I's schedule and what we come up with. But we just want to thank everybody and wish you guys all happy holidays. Be safe and start planning and start working. Uh, you should already be working on your business plan, already have that worked out, but really take the time, you know, with your time off, if you're taking time off, to really focus on what you need to do next year to make it the best year ever. So thanks a lot, can guys. I one, can I say one more thing? Yes. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> Take whatever your January and February ad budget is and spend every bit of it between now and middle of January on AdWords, on Jeff's sites or any seller valuation site that you've got. There's a lot of them because right now is when everybody's trying to decide who they're going to hire, hire, get to hire their house to Hire to sell their house after and the holiday. And get your magical seller lead gen emails out to your Absolutely. Get, well, every email you got, like out of your Facebook you can get. You can get emails from your Gmail. Get the emails out of your buyer lead systems. I mean, pull them all together and send them one simple, plain text, well-written email, which we'll write for you at Viral, up that whole list, drive that to your site. And, and you can be pretty surprised how that works. i got to tell you, you got to be a – I'm going to say this. It's going to sound horrible. That's just who I am. You're, you'd be a fool not to take Frank up on this deal because it's free. <laughs> And I know how expensive this crap is, this email stuff, and how hard it is. To well, I want to give people a taste of what could potentially be in that list. So as long as I have the extra hours on staff labor, I could do it for now. So we'll All see right. what happens. We've got to wrap this thing up. So. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next year.